Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to use AutoAnimate to recreate this creative advert using Linearity Move. Let's get started. What is AutoAnimate? AutoAnimate is a smart feature on Linearity Move that helps me turn my static designs into professional motion graphics in seconds. AutoAnimate applies automatically to your scene when you import multiple artboards in one scene from the Scene Builder panel. Linearity Move recognizes the change in state between the artboards and creates an animation automatically. For example, if I have a small shape on artboard 1 and it's bigger, rotated and in a different position on artboard 2, Move will automatically create an animated transition between those properties. Keyframes will appear on the timeline for each property at just the right moments, guided by the content of my artboards. And if something is missing from one artboard, but shows in another, the software will handle it by fading them out and back in again. Here's a smart tip for you. To make things smooth, make sure related elements share the same name across all artboards. Once AutoAnimate has worked its magic on my static design, I can edit the animation as I please. I can change the length of the transition by moving the handles of the animation bar. I can make a transition start or end at different times. I can add a new transition by interacting with elements directly on the working area and then edit the keyframes directly on the timeline. Let's work on a more complex animation. It all starts with a static design. Here, I am using Linearity Curve to create my storyboard. I have three stages of my static design, which I am going to transform into three scenes. I right-click on the first artboard and select Duplicate. I duplicate this artboard four times. By duplicating the entire artboard, I am sure that elements will keep the same name at each stage of the sequence. On the first artboard of this sequence, I delete the text and move the cursor to the bottom left corner outside the canvas. On the second artboard, I delete the text, reposition the cursor to touch the bounding box and I rotate the oval 45 degrees. On the third artboard, I resize the oval and square and reposition the cursor to follow the top left point of the bounding box. This time, I don't delete the text. I reposition each line of text using the arrow and shift. I press these keys five times for each line of text. Once I'm done, I lower the opacity of the text objects to 0%. On the fourth and last artboard, I resize the oval to match the style of the previous artboard. I lower the opacity of the bounding box and I reposition the cursor outside of the canvas. Moving on to the second part of the storyboards. I duplicate the artboards four times. On the first artboard, I delete the text and gradient. I select the group of images called Gallery. I change the width of the column using the Style panel. I move down the gallery, so the first image is at the top of the canvas. On the second artboard, I repeat the same steps and move the gallery up so the last image is at the bottom of the canvas. I repeat these steps on the other artboards and I reposition the gallery like so. I change the size of one of the images on the last artboard. On the third artboard, I move the text and gradient to the bottom until they are outside of the canvas. Now I work on the last part of the storyboard. I duplicate the scene four times. On the first artboard, I reposition all the colored rectangles at the center, and I resize them like so, to hide them behind the button. Then I reposition the cursor to the bottom left corner outside the canvas, and I reposition and rotate the text at the top of the canvas. I make sure that the two lines of text are also a bit farther apart. On the second artboard, I only reposition the color rectangles to the center. On the third artboard, 
I leave everything as is. On the fourth and last artboard, I change the position of all the elements. The cursor moves across the bottom line of the button, I move the colored rectangles above the button, and I also move the text up. Our storyboard is ready. Time to transform my static design into an animation. When I first open Move, I'm going to see the home screen. I can see that the last design file I was working on, it's already here, marked with the curve icon. I double click on the file to import its content into a new project on Move. This is the Scene Builder panel. Here, I can see as many artboards as there are on my design file. I simply select the first four artboards and drag them onto the scene builder line at the bottom of the panel. I do the same with the other artboards to create multiple scenes. When I am done, I click the import button and in just a few clicks, my static design is turned into a three scenes animation. I can import multiple artboards from Figma too and use auto animate to bring my static design to life. I select the import from Figma option and I follow the same steps to import the four artboards that compose the last scene. Keyframes will appear on the timeline for each property at just the right moment, guided by the content of my artboards. To complete my animation, I have to add transitions between each scene. Here, I select the lightning bolt icon between scene one and scene two and use the panel on the right side to edit the transition type and timing. I select the push type and set the direction to bottom to top. I change the timing to natural and increase the duration to two seconds. I repeat these steps to change the transition between scene two and scene three. To make sure I have enough space between the scenes to add this transition, I also increase the duration of each scene by a couple of seconds. To delay the start of the animation, I double click on scene 2 and drag the animation bar to delay the start of the scene by one second. I do the same for scene 3. When I'm ready, I can export my animation by clicking File on the top left corner and select Export. Here, I can preview my animation one last time before exporting it. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can learn more about Linearity Move and animation from the Learn tab on the home screen. Let's bring our stories to life with Linearity Move.